quicker. We this just, is, we just went out of time. This this is Paul Gallagher. Yes, um, when an insurance company checks your credit, checks your credit, it does not affect your credit. So don't feel don't feel that it's affecting your credit. And the letter they're sending you, if you sign that letter and send it back, that's authorizing them to check your credit. And if you do qualify for a better rate, you will get it, but it will not increase your rate. They can only use your credit score to lower your rate, but a, but a score from an insurance company will not affect your credit, so don't let that bother you. Okay. Okay. Uh, in checking out this matter, I, no. I found Hold on for one second. that... Okay. No, he's on, no, he's on the phone. Go ahead. Oh, I, I, I found that Margaret, uh, Senator Margaret Rose Henry had addressed this issue uh, about three years ago, and a compromise was reached in the legislature. But I do think uh, somebody has to sit down, as the caller suggested, and talk to the auto insurers and see if there is any correlation between credit scoring and driving, especially in an era where we're in a depression and everybody is going to have uh, some mark on their credit rating. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Um, Did you want to ask? Yes, no. let me oh, oh, hold for one second. Hold up. She wants to answer, um, too. As far as credit score is concerned, um, Margaret Rose Henry, Senator McDowell, and also um, Williams, Representative Williams, who's running for mayor, did introduce a bill to try to ban credit score altogether. We ended up with the fourth toughest law in the country. And the credit score that's being used, it can only be used, as Paul pointed out, um, to lower your premium. Also, um, the other thing that was done, and we passed legislation last year, a lot of insurance companies, particularly auto, will um, have subsidiary companies. And sometimes a book of business, your policy might be in a group with other policyholders where it's in a closed block and your <coughs> rates just go up. And I've been able to get law passed where you can be rolled into a subsidiary and considered as a renewed and not a new policy holder, so you do not get your credit score checked again. Did you want the bill that was passed in 2007 was a compromise because the Republicans controlled the state house. And the best they can accomplish was to say you can use credit score to write a new policy, but not a renewal. When, when the Democrats took control of the House and Commissioner Stewart took office on a pledge to ban the use of credit scoring altogether, the bills were never filed even when I wrote the bill. I represented this commissioner at a conference of the NAIC on that subject, and there is no correlation whatsoever between low credit scores and claims. It is a way, a fancy way, of substituting credit score for what used to be done that was called redlining. It should be banned altogether. Look, this is what we're going to do. Oh, oh, can't, I can't keep going back and forth because we've got a few minutes okay. and we've got a lot of people who are uh, and then I'm going to let you guys just ask these other questions. How about that? Can you, let's just get it on. Just take off the gloves. How you doing? Walk, welcome to the show. How you doing, Norman? This is Julius. Uh-huh. And, and my question is, I know a few years ago, African Americans was paying more higher insurance rates for the premium in their car insurance. And I want to know if that's still the case and what the panel going to do about it, if that's still the case. Good question. Again, gentlemen and ladies, we got to keep your responses to a minimum. we got too many people holding. You'll never get a chance to each, ask each other questions. Thank you. I think there is a correlation between zip code and premium. And again, that's an issue like credit scoring that the next insurance commissioner is going to have to sit down with those insurers that provide it and take a, take a good hard look and see, you know, ask the insurers, is there a correlation? If there isn't, then we're going to have to implement a different system. Thank you. Uh, Norm, I don't see any, I don't see any uh, uh, correlation right now that, that the blacks are paying anymore. What, what I do see is the city of Wilmington uh, does pay 30 to 40 percent higher rates on auto insurance. Hmm. And it is a lot harder to get homeowners insurance in Wilmington because of the flat roofs and because of a lot, so there's a lot of vacant properties. That makes, that makes it difficult. Hmm. But right now, I don't, I don't see, it, see it being anything to do with race right now, just, just the location. Good response. Um, Paul's correct, to, and I live in 19802. The rates are not higher by, by zip code, and we are working with insurance companies and the fire companies to change how ratings are being done um, and do more the, by the fire station. Um, also, uh, the rates in Wilmington, from what I've been seeing from looking at the rates, are actually decreasing, 
and have remained steady. And if there has been a crease at all, it has been lower Delaware and not in Wilmington. And the premium rates in Wilmington are actually lower. And in fact, on homeowners insurance, the state of Delaware, even though we rank as the second worst state for home for um, building codes, we rate in the bottom 5% for homeowners insurance premium. Okay. If you live in an urban area, you will pay more in rates for a home or a car than people in a rural area or in southern Delaware that has a home or a car of the same value. And if rates have yeah. decreased in Wilmington or Dover, it's not because of insurance companies cutting rates, it's because the value of the homes have gone down. Mm. The values of homes in, this, in southern Delaware have not gone down because the market's coming back up again. We're going to take one more call. Gentlemen, let you guys kind of talk to each other. How about that? How you doing? Welcome. To, uh, I, I can't take all these calls holding. I'm just going to take one more call. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Then let's I get it on. I'm to be here. Thank you for letting me be the last one. Mm -hmm. And as always, great show, Meg. Great show. Stop, stop stealing my ratings. My God. <laughs> hey, Norm, um, your guess um, as to the, uh, I'm sorry, second gentleman from the left, I don't know if we're being completely honest when we say that uh, to the public that um, uh, your rating won't be affected <clears throat> simply by an inquiry, uh, but that's another discussion. I'd like to know from each candidate very quickly, um, since President Obama's overarching intent is obviously to get uninsured people insured, uh, and the overwhelming majority of uninsured people are not in the churches, what other strategies do you have to go to grassroots people who are currently uninsured Americans and get the word to them that they now qualify or can have insurance? What kind of strategies do you have specifically for that population? Thank you for calling. Well, uh, that's something, again, I've been working on with uh, a number of outreach professionals. And the key is to take the office out to the community. Now, the community may not be the churches, but it'll be the senior centers, the other centers for children. Uh, it will be, if we have to, I'll go into the streets. I'm going to govern the way I campaign. And that's out front, in the streets of this city. Paul, did you, you don't have to say anything if you want to. Did you want to say anything, Kat? You, oh, well, yeah. I mean, oh. if you want to. Oh, okay. We do outreaches at the insurance department. We've been doing them for years. And we go out into, we do a lot of fairs. We used to actually go into shopping centers, um, which didn't seem to work out very well. And uh, we're also in the senior centers. We have volunteers in the senior centers. Um, most of the ones around the state, we're doing more senior center outreach. Um, Marla Blunt Carter's come on board and she's doing a lot of wonderful um, projects by coming together with um, our outreaches and helping to organize a theme mm -hmm. and we've been working through the state with other okay. agencies that we have partnership with. Why don't we do this? Um, if you guys may, want may to... May I just quickly respond? Yeah, you could quickly and then you can start off and you can ask anyone on the panel okay, a question. I, the outreach to the senior centers is excellent, but I was at the State Fair, and if you want to go to the booth at the State Fair and you want a free pen or a cup that changes color when you put a cold liquid in it, that's there. But <laughs> there's not outreach as far as how do you get insurance if you don't have it now. There's brochures. Now, we have good personnel, but we need to go out where the people are and educate people. And uh, wherever that happens to be, that's what we have to do. And I agree with Mr. Spivak on that one. Okay. This is the deal. We have about five minutes. I'm going to let you guys talk to one another. And then I'm going to give you like 30 seconds to look in the camera and tell people why they should vote for you. Is that fine? If you, uh, does anyone on the panel have a question for anyone? You, you can start. No. Do you have a question for anyone, Karen? No, but I, I do want to point out that I have not approved every rate increase. And I know. Uh, Mr. Crane's campaign has foiled my department, which is the Freedom of Information Act, and he, if he would pick up his papers that he requested us to do for him and pay his bill, he would see that I have not done that. Or if he visited our, wipe, our website, you would see I have not improved approved every rate increase and so that I have actually gotten lower rate increases. What do you, what do you mean? He, let, let me take that as a question, may I? Sure. First of all, my, cam said. my campaign didn't for you anything, but somebody I know sent a FOIA request to the department asking for rate increases, and here's the response. $1,200 is administrative cost before we'll let you come in 
and, and take, make your copies. Now, if that person wants to choose to take that to the Attorney General, that should be an interesting violation. So if it's there for us to pick up, I'd, I'd be happy to tell that person to come and pick it up. We've also asked through a FOIA request for copies of your travel expenses through the state. And I'd love to have that, but that also they asked for an administrative fee. Now, when I was in charge of the regulatory matters and we had FOIA requests, you know what we did with them? We responded, copied things, and gave them to the people. That's why I got she, these she, contracts. She, she said she got them and had them on, on her desk. Can I come get them? Absolutely. The Attorney General has set the price, and so once you pay the price $1, for the Attorney General, no, I think it's $1,100. There's your nice answer, girl. people. For $1,100, you find out what they're hiding. It's 11,000 <laughs> pages. <laughs> <laughs> Did I, you guys I, I, I do have one question for Karen, and we've we've been we've been going around uh, with each other now for about four months, and we er, everybody's listening to what we had to say. One question I do have is you talk about the workplace safety credit on workers' compensation, which is somebody has their business inspected, yes. and they could get a credit, and you say you return the money to the to these customers. If it wasn't for the agents in the state getting these customers to get these inspections done and paying the fee there wouldn't be no refunds to the clients. The agents in this state are the ones out there getting that money back for the clients. That's just my, my stipulation. Well, I think agents are very important to the people of Delaware and what they do. President Clinton once said uh, that elections are about the future, not the past. These squabbles are really de minimis compared to the, the, the large problems we're going to be facing in the future. President Clinton also said it's about the people, not the candidates. And I agree with that philosophy. I do think, though, that you, the voters, need to take a look at each of our websites to take a hard look at what our qualifications are. And of course, I'll be glad you to give mine, which is spivac2012.com, and that's S-P-I-V-A-C-K. Thank you. Uh, you want to have something in closing? Yes, thank you, Norm. Um, what I'd like to say is, uh, early on I said about what I've seen insurance companies doing in the state the past five years. And that's my main, main drive for running for insurance commissioner. I believe that the companies have had a free hand in raising rates and changing substances of policies, deductibles, things like that, hurricane deductibles, wind deductibles, uh, deductibles if you drop your, home, drop your auto policy, such as one of our companies is raising their homeowner deductibles to $2,000 if you drop the auto. And in my opinion that the insurance department needs to be more proactive in getting ahead of these things and the fact that I've had had my boots on the ground for 36 years dealing with the clients dealing with the consumers of Delaware and protecting their assets I believe I will do the same thing the next four years as an insurance commissioner. Karen in closing. Thank you very much I've been your commissioner for the last three years I have a very good record I have put consumers first time and time again we do scrutinize rates very heavily. Um, nobody gets away with an unjustifiable weight rate. I have a really top-notch staff. I have great consumer people that will help you with any question you have. We have a wonderful fraud unit. We have wonderful departments. We have a great website for you to look at. And I'd like to continue working for you as I have been working. I'm a resident of the city of Wilmington and I have been working very hard um, Thank you, for the people of Delaware. Real quick. This, uh, this election is not about the past or the future. This election is about the insurance consumers of the people of Delaware. I invite you to look at my website, MitchCraneForDelaware.com, and determine who is the best candidate, not necessarily by what they plan on doing, but by what they have done in their lives. And if you see my record in my lifetime of fighting for civil rights and labor and for people, then you understand what I stand for. And I'm also I'm not looking to have a job. I've had jobs. I'm looking to do a job. I'm not fighting to keep a job or to find employment. I'm trying to do what is best for the people of Delaware. I thank, thank you. I want to thank everyone. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've been enjoying the shows. I think this is one of the most uh, more important debates. Uh, I, I've learned a lot this evening. Um, next week, uh, we're going to have the Chief of Police, Chief Zerbo, is going to come on the show. He's going to be talking about the crime in the city. And, and then, don't forget, we're going to have a two-hour special on the mayoral debates, um, the mayoral campaigns, that will be August the 19th, beginning at 8 o'clock um, to 10 o'clock. We're going to transform this whole thing. Wow, this has been deep. I learned a lot. Yeah. Save me some money, though. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm out of here. Hey, Kevin, uh, all you guys, Mike, and Alvin, thank all you guys. Peace. Good show.